Hello everybody, Stephen Bull here, host of Waterways TV, live at the Miami International Boat Show with Dr. Guy Harvey. How are you? Great to see you here, Steve, and uh, welcome everybody. It's the first day. We're looking forward to a really busy week and hope everybody comes. The weather's going to be nice. Lots to come and look at. And this is one of the spots you want to stop by. Uh, yeah. We're going to get into the art in a second, but there's clothing with your artwork on it, including the official merch of the show. Is that right? That's correct. Uh, again, this year with the official merchandiser of the, uh, the official shirt features a uh, South Florida species, very colorful item. And we also have a booth here for our, the Guy Harvey Foundation as well. Uh, it's been running for 17 years now, 25 years of marine research work and education coming out of it. And uh, this is our 32nd consecutive year at the show. So we have a great track record. It's a wonderful destination for people to come and visit. And I'm here every day for people to come and meet, uh, sign their purchases and talk about fishing. I love it. See, art and science coming together is something a lot of people like to do. Um, a lot of people know you as the artist, and you're not an artist that started a foundation. You're a scientist that got into art. Is that right? Correct. Uh, they, they both evolved at the same time, really. But um, my hobby became my profession, put it like that. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So uh, real quick, because I know there's a bunch of people here that were keeping away from the line, but um, how's it been so far? What, uh, what Are there any, like same stories you get or, or any you've heard them all actually really? give me a fishing story that someone's told you <laughs> that well, surprised you th there's always new fishing stories because i do fish a lot contrary to what people think i fish and dive all the time as much as possible especially now that my kids are helping me with the business and the foundation i can do what i really enjoy doing which is more fishing mostly in central america panama and places like that plus it inspires a lot of new artwork that you see here at the show so there's always something new for the for the customers to look at. All right, and finally, I know uh, the foundation does a lot of things, but just in a couple bullet points, tell me about the foundation, what you're working on, and what the, the whole goal of it is. It's It all starts with research work and gathering data on the, the fish that we love to fish for, or catch and release, uh, the fish that we want to fish sustainably, um, and doing it in the right way, learning more about life histories of sharks, and billfishes, rays, Mahi Mahi is all sorts of different animals, mostly on sharks these days. But also we take that data and turn it into educational content for kids, especially here in Florida, the Florida school system. Um, we're taking our educational programs wherever we can, the Caribbean, in Spanish, to any venue that will take us. Because right now conservation is top of mind in just about all the marine environments that we deal with. I love it. All right. Well, if you want the official merch or any merch, stop by here. If you want yeah. some beautiful artwork, stop by here. If you want to learn about the foundation, get involved, donate, stop by here. Or if you want to tell fishing stories. I'll so basically, this is the one-stop <laughs> shop. Other than buying a boat, it's the Guy Harvey booth. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Enjoy. Everybody enjoy the Miami International Boat Show. Doors aren't quite open yet. We've already had the first big media lunch. Uh, Dave Folks, CEO of Brunswick, how are you? I'm great. Very excited for the show. So if you don't know, Brunswick owns some of your favorite brands, Mercury, Boston Whaler, Bayliner. Uh, but let's talk about Mercury. We're in the Mercury booth. Lots going on, lots of excitement. Um, electrification, it's growing and you guys are expanding. Tell me yes, about we it. Are. Well, we're a leader in the conventional engine space, as you know. We, all, uh, we have a huge stand here. We have outboard engines up to 600 horsepower here. But as you said, electrification is growing. A lot of it is in Europe, and we're entering with five models in a model line called Avatar, which is part of the Mercury brand. We just launched the first model last year, and we're launching the fourth and the fifth today, so we're going really fast in the electrification space. These are 48 volt products um, designed to power modest sized boats, maybe in uh, up to 20 feet of range. But very exciting to get in the market, and we're determined to be a leader in the electric space, just as we are in every other space of marine. And speaking of which, right behind me here, it's sort of a concept, but a concept. I, leading on things that come, you're not done with those five models of the Avatar. No, uh, the Avatar product line is going to grow, and, and you never know where it's going to grow, so we wanted to show something representative of, of the directions that we're taking, absolutely. And it, it's not that electrification is taking over as you mentioned no. you still have the internal combustion or ice engines from the 600 that big yeah, yeah. beast down to the the 9.9 there's been some changes on the lower end too yeah, there has we continue to innovate across of our, our product lines we think that um, the end game for marine is a combination of electrification and conventional products uh, electrifying marine products is more challenging than light duty road vehicles like passenger cars we don't have brakes we need more power our boats are much more sensitive to weight than road vehicles are. 
So for larger boats, having really efficient conventional engines is going to be the solution for the foreseeable future, but we're building out that product line and continuing to go to higher and higher power on electric products as the technology evolves, particularly the battery technology. I know it's a busy show and Brunswick has a lot of brands, so I'll let you go, but while I've got you here, yeah. let's talk about Flightboard. That's one yeah. of the newest brands in the, the Brunswick family. Yeah. Unveiled, a uh, more affordable option now. Yeah. You've tried these out, is that right? I have, I tried them out. These are e-foils, electric uh, foiling boards, becoming very, very popular, a bit like snowboarding. I used to be a windsurfer in my, in my time, so this was a great opportunity for me to get back out of the water on an e-foil. Um, we launched the two most accessible, value-orientated boards, but the Flightboard e product line is huge, includes a scooter even, uh, with handlebars. Uh, so, you know, all kinds of ways to get on the water here in a very exciting and accessible way. All right, just finally, why, why is Miami the show to unveil these? So the analogy I use for people that haven't been here is like, this is kind of like the Detroit auto show of, there's boat shows everywhere, but yeah. this sort of sets the trends, and so you chose to do the unveilings here for a reason. We did, you know, it's the biggest early season show in the US, and definitely a bellwether for the season and the industry. So, and, and Miami is just such a fantastic place to be. We always get wonderful crowds here. We always get a lot of interest in our products. So it's a perfect way to, to start the season with these new product launches. Oh, well, perfect. Well, have a good season. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much. It's great to be with you. With well, special guest, Ben Special, president of Yamaha Marine US. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you very much. Excited to be at Miami. Miami is always the fun time of year for us, and it's so much fun to see all the products and the stuff that's at Miami. It's just a blast if you like boats and motors. So. Well, you guys are sort of leading the expectations and excitement here. You can see the crowd behind us. There's journalists from all over the world checking out the hydrogen outboard. Tell me about this. Well, we've worked very hard over the last 12 months to get a hydrogen designed outboard motor. It's the first time we've done this. Uh, it's the first time it's been done in the industry. It is our XTO platform, our 450 horsepower class platform, where we've modified the engine to allow hydrogen to be the fuel delivery system. The next step, and we're working with Roush Automotive or Roush Advanced Engineering, that's helping us design the system that would feed the fuel from the boat into the engine. We're working with Regulator Marine to actually help us design the boat to hold the fuel system. Uh, you got to keep all that stuff in balance. It's one thing to design the engine, but you also got to design that delivery system into that product. Absolutely. I mean, partnering with some some stellar brands there, Roush and Regulator. Roush, Roush and Regulator are pretty cool companies. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, so is Yamaha. That's a very cool looking outboard. I mean, the the reaction is uh, pretty stunning. So let's start with the basics. Like. Why hydrogen? Why, why even bother doing all this? We, we look at the industry and as we move towards carbon neutrality through 202050, how do you do it? We got to use multiple technologies. There's not one solution for the marine industry. So we are exploring and we have explored what we call uh, sustainable fuels. We know that we can do 30% less carbon in fuel, which is actually very beneficial for us as an industry because that can go to the legacy fleet. The second area is electric. Electric has its place. It's not going to replace these types of engines from the technology that we know of today. So then we look for a third solution, which is alternative fuels, which hydrogen is a very viable alternative fuel. The Department of Energy and many other government associations are pushing hard to say, how do you build a hydrogen infrastructure? So we're saying, well, let's build a hydrogen vessel and let's prove the concept so we can look forward to that type of capability. It's one of those sort of chicken and egg things, right? Like they're not going to, the infrastructure is not going to be there until the boats, but you can't wait either way, right? So it kind of, it all develops together. It all develops together and, and we got to push the technology. We got to push the new ideas of our industry. We did this many years ago when we came out with four stroke outboards. People used to say that's never going to replace two stroke. And you know, that's, that's so far behind us now, it's hard to believe we ever even used a two-stroke engine. I think these types of technologies can do the same thing, be disruptive, and change, change the industry a little bit and get us a little cleaner. All right, and so obviously there's only so much that, you know, Yamaha can control, uh, but, you know, best guess, like, this is the, the, the concept and unveiling. It's going to be a while before we see hydrogen power as you know, a, a standard option. Um, what's your sort of thought on the timeline? Are we, is this like a three to five year or five to 10 year? Um, that's very difficult to predict because we are going through testing this summer with this out on the water. But I would think that you're looking between that four to six years or seven years, you might see something come out. But you, if you never start, you never get there, so. Right, and finally, we should not we should make note, this is not all that's going on here. You've, Yamaha's got a lot going on beyond this concept. Yes, we do. We, I, we just announced our 350 platform on a V6 configuration with our old V8 power. We also got some really cool connected stuff. I love the connected stuff. I think all products should be connected in the next couple of years from all of us. I love the connectivity. I have a boat in East Tennessee. I can check on it. 
I had planned to go up there on Sunday because I'm off work on Monday. So I want to be on the water. I just want to make sure my boat's right when I get up there. So I, I think the connectivity thing is a bigger and bigger deal as we go forward. And we're rolling out some new software right now on that uh, system. Absolutely. Working hard to be a leader across the board. Ben, special Thank thanks you for your much. time. You. In the sea booth with my friend Tim McCurcher. Hey, buddy. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you. So there's always a lot going on. Um, let's talk about just one or two things. And I see you got an engine here. What's yeah, going on? Yeah, Miami's always the place to showcase your newest, latest, and greatest product. So what we have here is our new 325 horsepower Rotax A supercharged engine. This is the most powerful engine in the personal watercraft industry now. And this powers our new RXPX uh, single seater kind of race watercraft in our RXTX model, which is our high performance three seater. 325, that's a lot of power, and that is a very compact package. Yeah, that's really the goal of this. It's a 1.6 liter engine, and we're getting 325 horsepower out of this. So the Rotax engineers really dissected every component of this engine, and how do we make it more efficient, but not make it bigger and heavier? Because power to weight ratio is really important on a watercraft, plus you want to keep it small, so we can design the watercraft around the rider and not around the engine. So ergonomics are at a premium, but now performance is a premium too with this new engine. I like it. Let's go to the other end of the spectrum here. Uh, this is the, the latest and greatest of the Spark Tricks. I remember when these came out um, and it looks a little bit different. A lot of the stuff's still the same, but like the seating in the top side jumps out is different. Yeah, so the Spark was really uh, launched to re-spark the industry and it did just that in 2014. But now we need a little refresher. So we have a complete new refresh package. This is like Spark 2.0. So the Trix model, we completely redesigned the top deck so it's a little bit easier to board with integrated handles. We have our Link accessory attachment kit that can be attached to the back. We actually uh, changed it from a two-seater to a one-seater because you're, you're doing tricks, you're kind of dancing around the platform. We made the glove box bigger to have your phone in it. And then we also, if you can take a look here, we actually have uh, integrated action camera mounts. So we can mount it here, here, and on the transom. So you can get those great POV shots because if you didn't post it on social media, did you really do it? <laughs> That's so true. now we can capture the moment. And yeah, this is the new Sea Do Spark brand new design for 2024. Do I have the person to talk to, Keith Younger, president of Sea Ray Boats? How are you? Doing great. How are you doing today? Okay. First of all, let's talk about the lineup here. You've got a lot of boats in the lineup. You can't possibly fit them all in this booth, but we've got a good range here, it seems. Yes. We've actually got three of our four series down here at the Miami show. We've got our SDX, which is our deck boat series. We've got our SLX, which is our premium runabout series, and our Sundancer series, which is our cruiser. Uh, we run from 26 feet up to 40 feet here. And because we're in the Florida market down here, we've got all of our outboard powered variants of these models. We also offer stern drive models as well. Excellent. And I've been lucky enough to come to a lot of boat shows over the years. I own a Sea Ray. It's not one of these beautiful new ones, but my 2001 we appreciate you. St it's still nice. This is the much younger and cooler cousins that I'm checking out here. But um, something that we've seen and I've seen sort of rolling out is this new design DNA and the engineering DNA that's, you know, we're seeing in more and more boats. Is that reflected? Yes, here? it is. We've actually, we started it uh, two years ago with our Sundancer 370, and that was kind of the first to roll out the new design DNA. And the intent of the new design DNA was to make all four families look like they fit within the brand of Sea Ray. And because over time in the past, some of the different series got away from the design DNA that we had in place. So this kind of brings it back under one umbrella, creates a future well into, or a, a design well into the future that will work for us for many years to come. And then we've also introduced it on our SLX series here where we've got our 260 and 280 models. So it doesn't matter as, as we go forward, doesn't matter what C-Ray you step on, different layouts and sizes of course, but you'll know it's a C-Ray. You'll know it's a C-Ray whether you're standing next to it or you're half a mile away on the water. You'll know it's a Sea Ray coming at you. Well, I know it's a busy show. I won't keep you long, but I do want to touch on this. Uh, 65 years, is that right, for Sea Ray? Yes, 65 years, kind of setting the pace for the premium recreational runabouts in the marketplace. And through those 65 years, we've had two owners. We've had CN Ray, our founder, and Brunswick. Uh, so we've been in good hands through those years, and we just continue to innovate and bring products to market that put smiles on people's faces. Speaking of the history, I hope you don't mind this part. I love this little tidbit. Um, 
you know, not the founder here, but has a connection to the founder. You are a Sea Ray family going back to a, a wee pup, right? Yes, yes. My father actually worked for the founder, C.N. Ray, back in the 60s, 70s, and early 80s. And now I get to come full circle as I'm the president of Sea Ray uh, for the past couple of years. So it's, it's a fantastic story for myself. It brings a smile to my face. But I think through the years, it's the wonderful people that have been building great boats for those 65 years. Perfect. Well, busy booth, lots of beautiful boats here. We'll let you get back to it. Thank you for your time. And I have pulled away Sean Chapman. How are you? How are you? Marketing manager for Simrad. And we yes. just unveiled this, the NSX Ultra Wide. So, so tell me about this. Very excited. This is our first uh, fully featured Ultra Wide MFD. Not only just our first, but the world's first. Uh, very excited about this new innovative aspect ratio. Um, what you'll see is right off the bat, it's very, very wide, hence the ultra wide name. It combines uh, the benefits of dual screens into one. Uh, so what you'll basically see here is the active area on this ultra wide is the equivalent to the active area for two of our dual units. We compare it to like a Simrad Go 9 or NSX 9. Um, but it eliminates all that dead space that you would have in between the bezels or when you're putting uh, dual screens flush mounted together. Um, so really giving that really nice immersive streamlined experience for on the boat. What we really like about it is it um, allows for our boat partners and our consumers to kind of reimagine how they're going to set up their dashes on the boats as well. Um, now not being restricted to kind of that square aspect ratio that we're very used to right now with all the standard MFDs, not only with our company, but you know, just alike within the marine industry. So it really unlocks that kind of power to be a little bit more creative and kind of rethink the dashes as well. Uh, and then when you get into this, what we really like about it is just the immersiveness that you have with whether you're looking at full screen, split screens, and the charting experience as well. So it's yeah, it's, it's a really great uh, uh, streamlined experience. Very cool. And this is uh, this is not just a concept that you're saying, hey, we're coming down. This is available. We this, can get this on boats. This will be available uh, in just about a month in uh, mid March. Uh, we have the 15 inch here. Uh, following that will be the 12 inch as well. But uh, yeah, this is the bigger unit that we have and uh, yeah, getting ready to launch this in just a few few weeks. Very cool. Yeah. I know there's a lot of people waiting to talk to you about this, so I'll let you go. Yeah. Sean, thanks Thank for you your so time. Much. Yeah, appreciate it. Nice. And here with CEO of ASIL Power, Anthony Liu. How are you? Good, nice to see you. So you just unveiled, literally, we just took the cover off of this um, electric outboard. So first of all, tell me about the company and, and this one is already out, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So Acel is a company from British Columbia, Vancouver, and uh, we just unveiled our 250 and 150 horsepower electric outboard. And you're right, 75 and 50 is already available in the market, and so on various various boat type, and various locations around the world actually. So that's important because this isn't just a concept or an idea. This is you know you can get out on the water with these, and you're expanding it. Um, it's early times in electrification, but not brand new. So you know. Tell me about this brand new one, this 150 and 250. Yeah, so this 150 is really providing, just like any electric vehicle, more torque than it's, uh, than it's rated. So the 150 really gives you 200 horsepower, and the 250 gives you 350 horsepower. It's running on our latest 800 volt platform, which uh, it's high power and high efficient. Talk about the batteries too, because that's obviously the big question. You know, so the the power and the the high torque, everyone gets that. But then, of course, all right, well, how do I power this? And batteries aren't light. Um, how how many batteries am I going to need to have something like this? So you need to have, uh, say, the 150 horsepower. You have an 80 kilowatt hour battery. So just kind of equivalent to a Tesla kind of type of battery. And speaking of battery, uh, stay tuned. There's more battery news to come uh, with lighter battery, of course, much lighter. Well, speaking of of weight. Um, how does this compare to an equivalent, you know, internal combustion engine of the same power? Also, this is much lighter. So the 150 is only 350 pounds, and the 250 is only 415 pounds. Oh wow! Uh, and I also really like this. We got a camera. Tell me why you put the camera on this. And it's night vision too, right? Oh yeah, it's definitely. So the reason we put a camera on there is because right now electric vehicles are software defined, and A cell we believe in not just. Uh, electrification but also digitalization so that's why we put a camera everywhere and then imagine the software update the usage that we can have with this camera for example anti-theft right for example fall off prevention there's so much technology that we can update into this 
like it. So what's the reaction been? I mean, you, as I said, just unveiled this one. This one's been out. Um, how are things been going for you? What's the industry and public reaction? Oh, yeah, we are seeing kind of people start adapting to electric because electric, it's easier. When I say easier, is you don't go need to go fill up and all that. And also, when you drive, you can actually talk. Like, we can actually do an interview on boat and we'll be interfered by the, the, the engine. So people are start adapting to it. I mean, it's new, but it's not that new. I mean, people are driving electric car today, so it's going to happen. So I'm very excited to see that happening. Nice. A very cool look, and I really like it. Congrats on being one of the leaders in this. Oh, yeah, that's probably a good question. What about, uh, can we get into, how does this, you know, costing overall in terms of, you know, the upfront cost and then the, the running it compared to a traditional internal combustion engine? Right, so the price of this I can't reveal yet, but uh, it's going to come out pretty soon. But uh, with this one, uh, the 75 is costing around $29,000 with the battery included. So if, you, if you're a boat user and if you compare uh, how much you're paying kind of the mortgage into the boat, it's actually kind of balance it out, right? Because then everything you pay into the gas pump, you're not getting back, you burn it, it's out. But everything you're paying to the battery, when you resell the boat, it's coming back to you. So if that makes sense, uh, I mean, the economy will make sense. I like it. All right, well, there's a lot of people here waiting to ask you questions. So Anthony Liu, thank you so much for your time. Congrats on the launch. Yeah, thank you, thank you. We are in the Electric Pavilion, and I'm with Enik Lozon. How are you? Nice to see you, Steve. Nice to see you. So Taiga is electric, personal watercraft, but snowmobile. So first, give me the high level, like the origin story of the company. Yeah, well, Taiga was founded on this ambition to provide an alternative to gas combustion engine in the power sports space. So there's seven years of R&D that went into developing our tractive unit, that's the battery and the electric motor. And we've sort of built snowmobiles first and then converted that into a watercraft. And I've had the joy of driving one of these and it does, you know, when you told me that it was going to feel like everything else that I was, would expect, um, but at the same time feel like nothing I've been on before. You were right. The power, uh, but it handles, there's no learning curve if you've ridden any other personal watercraft. Um, so tell me about some of the high level specs. like top speed, range, I bet the questions you get asked all the time. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, the first thing that people notice, like you mentioned, the handling, like it feels familiar, but then there's no emissions and there's no noise, okay? So you're on the water, you can only hear the wind and the waves and the pleasure of riding and connecting with nature. Then you'll find the same sort of performance that you get from any uh, gas combustion jet ski, so a top speed of 62 miles an hour, um, and you get about two hours of continuous ride time. Two hours is a long time, by the way. If you if people are like, oh, only two? Like, I challenge you to get on any internal combustion engine one and go for two hours and see how you walk when you get back to the dock. That's a long, that's a good range. Absolutely. And this is a playful craft, right? It's a sporty two-seater. You get the beautiful cantilever seat. It's very agile. It's a dynamic type of riding. So certainly after an hour, an hour and a half, you'll want to take a little break. Perfect. Now, charging, recharging the batteries. Once I've had all my fun, uh, what do I need? Do I need special equipment, special charging? Uh, the, what's fun about Taiga vehicles is that we can charge into anything. So a regular 10, a 110 uh, outlet, you take, um, it's an overnight charge. So that's your longest option. What we recommend to our customers is to have a level two charger like we have here installed at their dock. So as soon as you're finished riding, you plug it in. That's about three hours for a full charge. And if you have access to a marina or you're using public infrastructure, our crafts are DC fast charge enable. That's a 40 minute, for 80% state charge. Very cool, okay, well I see a bunch of people here gathered around, so we'll get out of your booth, let you get back to showcasing these. Uh, electrification isn't coming in boating, it's here. These are not concepts, these are for sale and retail markets and all that, so you wanna see this, come on down. And I have pulled Mark Robinson aside, how are you buddy? Good, how's it going, Steven? So far so good, uh, getting better. So program director with Boston Whaler, and we are in front of the newest the 365 Conquest. Tell me about this boat. Yeah, this is the all new 365 Conquest. We just released it here today at the Miami Boat Show, right? So brand new boat brings a lot of the features that you've come to expect from Whaler. It's right in the middle between the 325 and the 405. Brings some of those great features from the 405 down into a little smaller platform. Tons of integration that people have come to expect from Boston Whaler, right? So a cabin below, great place to sleep, entertain and hang out. The, ups, the helm deck on this boat, it's got convertible seats, great use of space. So whether it's just you and your family or you've got a ton of people on the boat with you entertaining for the day, I think you're gonna be really impressed with this boat. 
What's the reaction been so far? It's only the first day, but I mean, there's just a constant stream of people I've seen. Yeah, it's busy, right? We've got a lot of people coming on the boat. I think several people that have already pre-ordered this boat are walking through it today. A lot of press coming on it. You know, tons of excitement down here at the Miami Boat Show. And real quick, what, what kind of power do we got on this? So this boat comes right now with twin 600s. You can also get the boat with, uh, sorry, this is twin 600s. You can also get it with triple 400s, right? So set it up how you want to. Uh, great power from Mercury Marine, either way you set it up. Perfect. All right. Well, I know there's people waiting to talk to you. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. And if you want to see any more information, go to bostonwhaler.com or come down here and see us at the boat show. Hello, everybody from the Miami International Boat Show at the Cruisers Yachts in Water booth here with my friend Matt Van Grunsman. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Fantastic. So we're going to talk a little bit about this boat right behind us. But first, let's talk about the range you've got here. There's I don't even know how many there are. Six, seven. We have eight boats on display here today. Our, our, for this show, I should say. Uh, we have four Cantiuses, uh, starting with our 60 Fly, our 50 Cantius, 46 Cantius, and 42 Cantius. And then on our GLS range, we have our 34, 38, 42, and our all new 50. The uh, Cantius range and line is fantastic. I'm a big fan, very popular. The GLS line has been growing since you launched it, and this beautiful girl right here is the latest and greatest this is the 50 this one is the new one right this is yeah the 50 is the latest and greatest from our lineup as a whole uh latest and greatest from the gls series um it's really we call it the ultimate gls uh it's got it's powered by triple 600 mercury uh, mercury verados uh dual beach doors uh it has entertaining for all uh accommodations level has a it has a stateroom and then a separate sleeping area and a full head with a separate shower. So it's really got a, it's a, the, the most versatile boat we produce um, really for anyone's boating needs. And it's fascinating too that, you know, people will look at these and the, the big day boats have really sort of exploded over the last five, 10 years. So um, if you're into the, the hardcore heavy cruising and that's what you want to do long distance stuff, you know, that's one side, but most people are doing this day boating. And that's, I'm guessing where the sort of genesis of this GLS line is where you have the best of both worlds. You can spend time on this, but uh, it's primarily to be out on the water, enjoy the day. Absolutely. So our, uh, that's really where our GLS came from. Um, there has been a, a, a slight switch as there always is in every market uh, to, to more day boating. However, you still do have the opportunity to, you know, overnight, weekend on our GLS series. But if you're looking for the long range cruise with all the interior amenities for comfort, um, that's truly our Cantius lineup. Um, our Cantius lineup, uh, you know, from our 42 is a two stateroom, two head boat, plenty of interior space, plenty of interior storage, uh, full galleys. And then we go all the way up to our 60, which is uh, three bedroom, three stateroom, uh, two head, and just you know, everything gets larger as, as you grow in size. So it, that truly would be your long range cruising vessel. I was about to cut you off there because that has more amenities than my house. <laughs> um, but I see it's really busy booth. I'm gonna let you get going. Uh, come down to the Miami Boat Show. If you're at One Herald Plaza, come down the docks to see them. Or if they can't make it here and they wanna learn more about these, how do they do that? Visit us at cruisersyachts.com. We have every model. Uh, we have full walkthroughs. Uh, specs. We have everything on our website. This time at the Vanquish Yachts booth with Andrew Southworth. How are you? Good. How's it going, Steve? Thanks for taking the time to come by today. Well, how's it going? I'm, I'm surrounded by beauty, yourself included, of course, but <laughs> the vessels are just a little bit more beautiful. Tell me, first of all, what do we have on display here? Sure, sure. So on display here, we have our Vanquish 55. This is part of our sports line. It's made out of composite, so carbon fiber and fiberglass. Then we have two of our aluminum models here, our 45 T-top and our 58 T-top but we uh, do anywhere from 40 all the way to 115 feet. And carbon fiber and uh, aluminum, that's, that's a very unique and high-end build quality. That's right, so we specialize in making custom um, premium yachts. Uh, we're based out of the Netherlands, so we're a Dutch-made company. And with the aluminum, not only does it reduce weight, but it's fully customizable. So if you wanna add you know, a wet bar outside instead of a couch or a TV, you can really make it personal to yourself. And then our sports line with the composite and the fiberglass um, and carbon fiber, that's gonna be your, more of your speed, your aggressive, but also your luxury boating. Do a little bit of tweaks and customizations, but not quite as flexible as the aluminum builds. That's correct. You can still make it personal to yourself. Any colors, cushions, layout sort of stuff, wine cooler, fridge here, you know, it's really meant to be personal to you. 
I like it. So if you want to personalize your vanquish, come see my friend Andrew here in water at the Miami International Boat Show. And if you can't make it, of course, stay tuned to americasboatingchannel.com. And if you want to learn more about these boats and can't make it, how can they do that? That's right. You can visit our website at vanquishyachts.com or swing by our office in Fort Lauderdale right off of Las Olas Boulevard. Fantastic. Have a good rest of the show. Thanks. Thanks for stopping by, Steve. Uh, rare opportunity for us because this is a really popular one. I'm here with Ralph Baird, Yacht Sales International, representing Green Line. How are you, buddy? Awesome. This is a great day to be at the Miami International Boat Show. Sun's out. Bring your sunscreen. It's just an amazing time to be out. So tell me about uh, this boat and we'll, you know, just a real quick walkthrough. If people want to see, you can come down yourself or, of course, check it out online. But tell me about this Green Line 48. This, this boat here is a 2024 brand new 48 foot uh, diesel hybrid solar powered motor yacht. I like the, the hybrid idea. You know, electric is coming and all that kind of stuff, but you know, we see an automotive hybrid was the first thing that everyone kind of got used to. It extends your range, gives you a bit of the best of both worlds. And we're using some of that technology here with the propulsion system on this boat. So we have twin Yanmar 370s on this behind a straight shaft behind each motor is an electric motor. So when we're underway with diesel power, uh, it's generating electricity that when we turn the diesel motors off, we can use the power that we've created, electricity, to then propel the mo motors or the yacht with that electric power. So we can do a silent yachting, we can uh, extend the range of the, the, the yacht, we can um, uh, do no wake zones, uh, long straight passages, all under electric power. Uh, so it is an incredible feature to have. Very, very cool. Uh, and I know there's people waiting to get on, and I will not stand in the way of a sale, but um, give me like a one-minute walkthrough of this. Like, can we have a peek inside? Let's go inside and see how gorgeous this thing is laid out. All right. Ooh, no canvas. Already, I'm sold. Ooh. Yep, come aboard. So this is, uh, finish is our silver oak. Uh, this... Um, this layout uh, allows for somebody to uh, bunk out here as well. You can lower this table. It's got a cushion. This is equipped with uh, um, induction cooktop when it's installed. The microwave uh, oven is this. You can get it in convection. It has a dishwasher here, a uh, full-size fridge and freezer. Uh, this boat is probably the only one in the show that actually has a basement, and we have a basement below for additional storage. You can put a Basement? We can put a uh, uh, additional dry goods down there. You can install a uh, another freezer, uh, washer dryer. This has a three uh, suite uh, layout. Which, um, two uh, suites have bunks. Uh, one of them has a washer dryer combo in it. Uh, forward uh, owner suite is uh, a queen island. You got storage underneath. Uh, lockers on either side. What I love about that spacious room is just how much natural light that we get in there. All, all of the green lines uh, have an incredible amount of natural light inside to bring nice high ceilings as well. So you never really feel confined when you're in a boat like this. And oh. this, this is like a floating condo. Yeah. And um, when you're out on the water, of course we have a TV, this lowers down, you have a 360 view of water, and it's just amazing, incredible. I love it. And if it's a beautiful day like it is here, you got the aft cockpit, we got the bow lounge, fly bridge, but if it is a little cool or too hot, you've got your comfort in here, but you, you don't feel like you're crowded inside. I like it. Yeah. It's, uh, and it's really easy to operate as well. As you can see at the home station, we, the signature feature on the Green Line is to put a home station door for the captain to uh, jump outside, uh, perhaps when docking, he's located right at the spring cleat, he could toss the line to a dock and easily um, bring it over to the dock with your balanced stern thrusters. 
All right, very cool. We'll uh, we'll let the people get on this boat, but I appreciate your time, Ralph. So if people want to get a look at this and they can't make it to the Miami show, uh, how can they learn more about this boat? They can go to our website at yachtsalesinternational.com. With my friend Jose Arena, how are you? How are you, Steve? Fantastic. So one ocean yacht group, you've got some Correct. beautiful vessels. Thank you. Um, I know it's a busy spot. We won't get on all of them, but let, let's do a little walk through your booth. Tell me what let's you got here. Let's do it. Let's do it. So one ocean yachts group. We're exclusive dealers for different brands. This one right here is the G-Tender. This is the ultimate rib. This boat is made in Italy. And as you could see, you can fully customize it. You don't see ribs this way, you know, in terms of fit and finish, the color combination, and also the performance. This boat is amazing. Made in Italy, G-Tender. We go this way, star of the show. Oh Palmer my gosh, Johnson. look at this thing. Palmer Johnson. Palmer Johnson, 63. This boat is one of one. 100% carbon fiber. This boat is trimer and hull, okay? 21.5 foot beam. This boat is amazing. The performance, the fit and finish, also the history and the heritage of Palmer Johnson. This is the boat that they built since 2016. This is their launch, this is their baby, the smallest boat that they make, 63 feet. Amazing boat. We go over here, you see the Tesoro lineup. Okay, so we're also dealers of Tesoro. Tesoro's made in Spain. Tesoro, we have the outboard version, and then we have the inboard, that you see the third boat. You have different configurations. The whole point here is people could see colors, layout, you could do so many di different things. This is the ultimate table for Miami. This boat you can, you know, operate yourself. It, this boat is great for Miami, great for day cruising, family. Really, really nice boat. Again, coming from Spain, this boat. If we go this way, I want to show you the Galeota. This boat. Look at the lines on this made thing. Made in Italy. This is all about class all about Italian elegance. Look at this fit and finish. This boat is a great boat, you know, for cruising. If you have bad weather, you want to be inside, you have inside, outside. But this boat is all about the details. This boat is very, very nice. If you're going to be up north, you know, for someone like an, even in Palm Beach, cold weather, etc. This is really an Italian classic and Galeota built in Naples, Italy, and they go back 70 years. So these wow. guys have been building boats forever and you could see it on this boat. All right, and we're gonna end with gonna a very end. unique watercraft. I've never seen something like this and I love it. Everybody goes crazy for this. These are actually Fiat, okay, is behind this. They're built in Italy. And Fiat, the cool thing about this is they put everything from the car. So the headlights are from the actual Fiat. No. The rear view mirrors are from the actual Fiat. The tail lights are from the Fiat car, the wheel, and the digital dashboard. That's all from the actual Fiat car. Another thing, they've only given a production because this is after the Fiat 500. There's only 500 production limited edition so each one is numbered you get a plaque and you, and they're only building 500 you get to choose the color you get to choose the combination but again it's only 500 and these are just boats these aren't amphibious fiat no <laughs> but the the, the the fit and finish the quality the way they write they're amazing oh yeah and again this is not a gimmick this is fiat behind it and you know they're, they're amazing and this is going to be a collector's item because they're only making 500 worldwide we are the dealers for fiat in the u.s beautiful all right well if you can't make it down to the miami international boat show to see these in person how can people find out about these and everything else that you've got oneoceanyachts.com you could see everything there and if you are at the show you could see us here we are right next to the venetian bridge on the north dock one ocean yachts group my friend Mike Kiley with Dennison Yachting, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Good morning. Good morning. Tell me about this absolute stunner of a boat. This is a Say Carbon Yacht. They're built in Germany. They are 100% carbon fiber. They've got Volvo V8 uh, inboard outboards. Uh, 
Basically, it's about 980 horsepower, and the boat only weighs just under 10,000 pounds. Ooh, this thing, it scoot. It flies. But one of the really cool things about that is not only is it light, but it also handles better. Uh, it's more efficient because it's half the weight. It actually burns about a third less the fuel of any boat of its size. And you got a couple of them here, right? We've got a bit of a range. Yeah, of these. We've, we've got their 29, which is their entry level boat. Uh, same thing, this is about just under 500 horsepower, and this boat only weighs 3,000 pounds. It's like a paddleboard with a V8 on it. Um, but the, the, these boats are really cool. They're all made of carbon fiber. They Not only do they look cool, they're very sensible. They have all the things that boaters really want to have on a fast, cool boat. So it's got all the styling, but it's not just styling. This is a boater's boat. It's sensible, yeah. It's got a little whole type of stuff. Yeah, everything's carbon fiber. Here, come forward. I'll give you a little quick tour. Obviously, sun pad. Uh, there's an engine bay under here. The table drops down, and it's all 100% carbon fiber. You're... Cushions will fold in. You still have your champagne bucket in the center for the girls. Hydration's important. Exactly. As you can see, this is all carbon fiber. Some people don't realize how strong carbon fiber is. I'm 200 pounds. Look at look how thin this is. That's crazy. I'm not going to do the chin up yeah. only because of a bunch of production realities. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you've got an absolute roadster effect here. Yeah. You feel, I mean, when you sit in the seats, you know you're sitting in something. And then you have all types of uh, software just for the boat. You can go up and down with uh, doors, engine hatches. And what's really cool about the door here is that if you wanted to see how the door opens up, the door becomes the step, and then it folds right back down to be the, the door. Oh, that's a clever design. All right, well, as you can see, there's the three of them in the water here at the Herald Plaza location, the Miami International Boat Show. So come down and see my friend Mike. If they can't make it, how can they learn more about these? Mike at Denison Yachting. Uh, so it's Mike, uh, Mike at DenisonYachting.com, or you just go to Say Yachts Miami, and you'll find us there. Absolutely beautiful. This one might not be available because I would love to buy it. We'll, uh, we'll have a little chat. Maybe we'll go down those stairs. We'll make that work. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Pleasure. Oh, with Rob Hammerling from Nautical Ventures. How are you? Steve, good to see you. I'm delighted. So, it seems like you guys have just about half the docks here. I know it's not quite that many, but Nautical Ventures has a lot of brands. So we're going to do a little different one here. I'm going to ask you to give us sort of a high-level overview of some of the beautiful boats you have on offer, including this stunner behind us. Well, I would love to. Uh, yeah, Nautical Ventures is uh, one of the largest, fastest-growing, privately-held dealerships here in Florida. We're East Coast, West Coast, just acquired a uh, store up in the Panhandle. Um, we represent a vast variety of boats. This, uh, we're featuring here the, the Yacht Group, which is an Uncle Ventures Yacht Group. We have uh, five brands, which I was saying before, five and a half brands, but <laughs> we'll get into that as we get, uh, get down the dock. Uh, behind us is the Solaris Power. Uh, this is a uh, Italian boat that is um, absolutely magnificent. Competes at the very top end of the spectrum for day boats. You can just see it just it screams Italian curves, beauty, sex appeal, oh, I love um, it. magnificent boats. Perfect. All right, we'll work our way down here. It's it's busy. It's is the show and it's it live, is, but it's it good. It's very busy. Uh, but I mean, we are blessed with, uh, in my nine years of doing this show, by far and away the nicest weather that we've ever had for the Miami show. Yeah, this is so uh, perfect. We are, uh, yeah, we are, we are getting quite the crowd. So coming down here, we have uh, Windy. Um, and this is another one of our lines, beautiful day boats, a variety of sizes. Um, you can see it's got a very distinctive look. This is a, another one of our Scandinavian brands, and we'll get back to uh, the, the other Scandinavian brand further down the dock. So coming up, after we pass the, uh, the last windy, you'll see the D'Antonio. Very, very different and special boat. It's got a very unusual square shape to it. Yeah. It also has hidden outboards. So these are actually outboard powered boats oh. underneath a swim platform. Uh, so you don't give up the beauty of the swim platform, which so many people love, um, but you get the uh, practicality and the ease of uh, outboard motors. In this case, you've got two big uh, Mercury 600s uh, underneath there. That's cool. And you can and, see uh, they're even trimmed up. There's room to they, trim up. You can see the you prop. can trim them up exactly right. So oh. it's uh, kind of the best of both worlds for people that are looking for that. Um, some people love the swim platform and uh, don't want to give it up, even if it's uh, more practical. So it's a win-win. Moving down further, a 
on the right side here, if we want to look over here, these are our yacht yachts. This is the Fairline. Oh, these are beautiful. Um, these are spectacular from 33 to 68 feet. Uh, British company, UK, uh, 60 plus years in business, part of the big three. Uh, you have uh, Princess, Sunseeker, and Fairline. Um, they make uh, some of the most spectacular boats in the world. Fairline is a, a little smaller batch, like a small batch bourbon. We build about 70 boats a year as opposed to two or 300 right. um, and concentrate on that smaller marketplace, kind of the uh, below 70 foot, whereas the Princess and Sunseeker are going for the bigger markets. So we compete in a few areas, but we also have our own territories. And then over here we have, and this is kind of the crowd favorite, uh, the Axapar. Um, Kind of created an entire market. Um, you now see an awful lot of boats with this Scandinavian design. Um, really very cool. When I first saw them, I thought that they would be in terrible riding and wet. I was wrong. Um, and when I said five and a half brands, if we take a look over here, this is the Brabus version of the Axapar. And like they did with Porsche and Mercedes historically, um, taking a certain number of their vehicles and making them super special with engines and all sorts of other uh, add-ons. That's what they have done, and we are the, uh, the one marine company that they have partnered with, and we have the Brabus edition of it. So that is what, uh, that is what Nautical Ventures has in the yacht group. Is that it? And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is an impressive lineup, well, Rob. If you give me some time, we can spend the rest of the week going through each of the boats that are here. Uh, but yeah, this is, uh, that is it, and uh, oh. this has been an awful lot of fun. Waterways is all over the place, whether it's boat shows, boat adventures, or anything in between. Check us out at waterways.show, follow us at Waterways TV, and of course you can find us on AmericasBoatingChannel.com. That'll work. Yeah.